welcome back to yet another turn of The Great Crisis of Frederick II. So before I begin, just a quick update about the channel overall, really, and this particular game. I do not, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the format a little bit, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more, I think, in an upcoming episode of Solo Babble. In fact, I'm thinking about doing a Solo Babble live episode, so look for that. Uh, there's going to be probably, uh, probably pretty soon, I think I want to do a, 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 a live Solo Babble where I'll we'll get the chat room going and discuss some things, some games that are coming up. Actually, kind of what I really want to do is go through either and or uh, my Compass Games pre-order list, uh, maybe GMT if we can squeeze the time in, just to kind of show what I have uh, coming in for this year, or I'm assuming this year, you know how the P500 is, uh, with um, ordering it in the Compass. I think Compass, I think, I probably stand a little better chance of getting some of these games this year, but uh, look look for a an announcement on a Solo Babble Live episode, and... That's one of the things I want to talk about is maybe we'll start doing some more of these live things. I kind of didn't want to be on camera, but, you know, this is more about gaming, not me. So I kind of shy away from that stuff. But I think at this point, I probably ought to ought to think about it. But as far as these games go, I'm, you know, we're a month into playing this game and I haven't gotten very far. It's uh, we're only four turns into this. N not really even four turns. I've only Austria has gone. So I think what I'm going to do, what I'm thinking about doing and today, I think I'm just going to go through it and play through this turn like I've been doing. So we'll finish up one more turn this way. But I believe what, I, what I'm what i going to do is play through one more uh, phase, and then I'll probably just go ahead and finish this game off camera. And maybe not totally off camera. What I might do is, uh, is show some highlights of what happens throughout gameplay. But I think I'm just going to finish it, and we'll see how it turns out. And then I'll probably do like a review, and that may—that's part of what I'm thinking for the channel overall. Part of changing the um, changing up how I do this, and just kind of changing the format. And what I might start doing, and again, I'll, we'll talk more about this later. But I'm thinking about picking a game, maybe do an unboxing, and just kind of a preview uh, talk about it. Play a couple of turns uh, like I've been doing. Because I think it's a good way to learn how to play these games, and I, I certainly want to keep doing that. And then think. Uh, probably just go ahead and play the rest of the game off camera and come back and do kind of like a review on what I think about the gameplay and things like that. And then, of course, talk more about solo, solo play and solitaire play, because I haven't really been talking as much about solitaire gaming as, as I want to. And I, I definitely want to do that and maybe do some more how to things to consider when you when you play solitaire with this. So Enough said about that. Let's go ahead and jump right into another phase of the game here. And if you remember from last time, Austria uh, got to go. So they were the first chit out of this cup over here. And so they were able to actually hold on. And they were actually able to be a uh, thorn in uh, Prussia's side. And they actually forced the Prussians back up here from Dresden. So that was impressive for the... Uh, for the Austrians to do that. And so we will see what happens now. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to pull a chit from this cup. And I'll just dig in here and see what we get. We get Austria again. So this is huge for Austria. This is going to be huge. And this is kind of one of the things I like about this game is the, uh, the chit pull system and what it does to gameplay. We're going to get to see Austria take another turn, back-to-back -back turns, and that's that, that's powerful. That's a powerful thing for Austria. So we will go ahead and do that, then. We will um, get Austria underway here. So we the first thing we do, of course, is to check for line of communication, and the only area of concern is still up here, but these guys, you know, technically they're in a fort right now, so they are not, they are not going to suffer from... Um, being outside of, they're not going to be isolated, in other words, as it says here. So we'll go right to determine action points. Now, the Austrians are lucky here in that there are no, their uh, action point marker is not out. In other words, they haven't, they don't, they're not negative, not in the hole. So whatever they roll here, they're going to get. So we will roll, it is a d6, and whatever they get, they'll get. So let's do that. And I will switch cameras here so we can watch the roll. And they get a six. 
again, uh, this is just exactly what, if you're Austria, what you want to see. Back to back turns, and they get six action points. I don't know that they're gonna they're gonna use all six of those. So let's see. We're gonna move the action point marker for Austria to six. So that is good news for them. And so, okay, so six is the number. And I'm gonna get out the again the handy dandy sequence of play here for me. Anyway, it's handy dandy. This is on Board Game Geek. And I really should, I'm not sure who posted this. I probably ought to make mention of the person that posted this because it is handy. I highly recommend you go check it out if you're playing this game. So we've we've determined action points are six. And now we go to the, and this is the same. I think I mentioned this in an earlier video, but basically this is a more detailed version of the uh, procedure of a phase here on the back of the rule manual, rule book for Frederick uh, two. So we will now, determine how we want to um, spend our action points. And so recovery, of course, is one of the things that are indicated here. And the only place that Austria could recover, there is a unit here that is depleted, but it's under siege. So, well, it's not either. I'll tell you, I, forgot. I forgot. They actually pushed the Prussians back. So it is not under siege. So they can actually spend an action point to um, recover this unit. They are under siege up here, but they do not need any recovery there. And I don't think I'm going to look under here real quick because I, I don't think I think we just have the one unit that's depleted because these guys came in and, and forced the Prussians away from Dresden. So I think they're going to do that. And I believe it's one action point. I think they're going to spend that one action point to. Let's see, one action point. Yeah, number of action points to flip the number of depleted units. There's only one here, so they're going to spend one action point, and that will that will flip this unit over to its. If I can get them right side up, it will restore them. Make sure I did that right, because it says uh, the when you recover, not isolated, not in an enemy controlled space, and not under siege. So no, all those conditions are met. They're, they're, uh, they're not any of those things, so they can definitely do that. And I don't think there's any other units that need recovery here. So they will move right along to the marching part of this. They can issue marching orders and fight battles, of course. Uh, they can certainly advance over here now, perhaps. They have, I still think this is eight, a stack of eight. And this is a stack of, there's two leaders here, so I think that's uh, one, two, three, four. I think that's eight as well. I think it's eight nice. They could try to come up here and take this. This is a resource fort, I believe. No, it's just a regular fort. So they could try to come up and take this regular fort, or this regular fort. Certainly have an easier time going this way, but then that would leave a path open for the Prussians to march down. And then we have the victorious stack in Dresden that could continue on. I mean, maybe they want to try to advance and push. They, they've got the Prussians now. All of these units are depleted, so that's interesting. That is very interesting. And then another possibility, another choice is they could just come over here and attack Leipzig if they wanted to. Huh. You know what I think? I think... Or do they just want to sit here? Because they are... Well, if they, you know, this is tough because they could... You know, if they move... If I, if I march them and, and they chase down this Prussian army, that leaves Dresden open again for uh, Frederick over here. And he could just march right across and attack again. Of course, that wasn't so successful the first time. Yeah, uh, let's see. So we have this stack, and this is a stack of eight. We need to advance this stack. So they need to start, we need to bring them forward. And I could actually bring this stack forward. If we spend an action point, we can move, I believe it was, let's see, I think it was two or three spaces per action point we march with uh, in our own territory. So it's an extra space if we're traveling between spaces controlled by this side. So yeah, they could move an extra space. So it would be 
they could move. That would be two total. Move an extra space if unit not isolated, traveling by land, spaces you control, no enemies on any of the spaces. So it would be one action point to move per space. So, and then the extra point if we go. So it really could be, we could go one, two. So what I could do, I believe, is I could. I could have this army chase down the retreating Prussian army and then perhaps bring this army up to reinforce uh, whatever happens here in Dresden from uh, Frederick sitting over there. And so that would be, that would be, so it's one, it was one per, one per uh, space, I believe, right? One per, we have one stack of one to eight. By lands, one action point. Yeah, move is one space per action point. But then you get the extra space if you travel between spaces controlled by your side. So the one extra, so really it's it's one action point to move two. So if I spend an action point, it would be one, two. Then I'd have to spend another action point. So for two action points, one, two. And for three action points, one, two. So for three action points, I could get to Dresden. We have five action points. We have plenty of action points to do that. So I think I'm going to do that. I think what I'm going to have is this stack of, I believe that's a stack of eight units. And I can only move eight. Let's double check to make sure that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I think I'm going to spend an action point. I'll take us down to four. And that's going to move this stack. They're going to chase the Russian army that they just beat up in Dresden. So let's move them up to here. And I'm going to, I'm going to put a, let's see, let me just grab a battle marker. Just grab a battle marker to show that there's going to be a battle there. So that was one action point, and then, like I said, it's three action points to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to spend three action points. That'll take us down to one. Then we have this stack into Dresden. So we'll bring this stack forward to Dresden. Let's see. Now, do I have to spend the action point to actually attack? I forget. Or is that automatic? The player may spend one action point for any space with an ongoing siege. Well, that's not the case. Yeah, so I don't believe in this case we would have to spend another action point to, to do that. It would just be an automatic battle. So that tells me that I could move this stack, this army, to one of these other spaces and it would also be an attack but I don't want to I don't want to leave this resource fort exposed what I could do is bring these reinforcements up there's three I could bring th this stack into this resource fort and then maybe next turn attack being overly cautious, perhaps, but let's do that. Let's spend our final action point, and I'm going to move this stack of units forward. And so that's my action points. We recovered and moved our forces, and now we fight battles. So, fight battles. So, we'll take this battle marker off. I don't think probably I'd really need. And then I uh, will bring this battle marker off screen, on screen. And we'll just kind of stick it over here. We have, of course, the Austrians well, lined up on the attacker side. The Prussians, the weakened, seriously weakened Prussians are on the defender side. Uh, this is a fort, so... I think the 
Prussians probably do want to put a unit in the fort before this battle takes place. They'll probably take the leader. He's going to going to go into the fort and have some tea and command from back in there, I think. So that's going to leave these four. Well, actually, you know what? Let's wait a second here before we... Well, I think... I think... Okay, let's, let's back up here. I think that the what happens is before the battle, the defending player has to decide whether a unit is going to be in the fort or not. And then retreat would only occur when it's the defender's turn to attack. So I think what's going to have to happen is they're going to have to decide if someone's going in that fort or if they're all going to stay on the field of battle. And honestly, I think the Prussians here probably, they probably don't want to put that leader in the fort. They probably just want to grab one of the depleted units and put it in the fort. Because remember that if, you know, there's only one round of uh, battle when there's a unit in the fort, and if they actually somehow manage to survive that round, then that one unit can tie up this entire army. So I think that's what they're going to do. I think we're going to have one unit will be inside the fort, and this these four Prussian units are going to have to they're going to have to to stand and take a volley of fire. And there's not really a whole lot they can do about that. So we will take the Austrians. I don't think there's any. Tactics cards they can use here. Let's see. Now they only have two. Can you see those? They only have two. They have the, the um, this is the uh, rapid mobilization, so that's not going to do any good. It's simply going to be uh, an, an attack of this is eight units, so that's going to be eight d6. And they're looking for a six to hit, but they get plus two because of Brown's plus two ratings. So they're looking for fours or more. They are going to fire a volley at that seriously depleted Prussian army. So let's let's do that. And that looks like <laughs> that's only just two sixes hit and that's it. So they only get two hits. And that's not what they wanted to see. So what that's going to do is take out Two of these, you know, it's gonna take out two of these Prussian units, and they, they will get flipped back to their their full strength side and go back into the reserve. So I'm gonna put those back into the reserve. So let's do that, and then now that leaves. Now we go to the Prussians, and they can either choose to attack or retreat now. So they can't attack really because they're depleted, and depleted units cannot fire. So we're going to take all these dice out. Um, and I think what they're going to do is retreat. They are going to retreat. So they will retreat to... I'm going to retreat them to Berlin. So I'm going to move these units to Berlin on the depleted side. And you'll see that when we come back. And now the... The attackers here can attack the fort itself, and so they will do that. So that means that it's only one round, retreat, retreating not allowed, no tactics cards, and commander bonus does not count here. So they're going to have to get a six. We will see what happens. And of course, the depleted unit will get to return fire because they are in a fort. So it is eight... Still 8d6. Make sure I got 8 in my hand. I do. So we're going to roll, and we're looking for 6s here. It has to be a 6. <laughs> and there are no 6s there. And this is exactly why you need to think about leaving someone back in the fort, because you can slow down a, a, a very good, a large army. I mean, there's 8, eight units here that's, that's getting bogged down by this. One little depleted Prussian unit. So the Prussian unit will get to return fire, and it will get a plus one bonus because it's it is in a in a regular fort. It gets plus one to its roll. So this depleted Prussian army unit fires back at the Austrians and totally misses with a one. 
must be wet powder or something. All right, so that is going to end that round of battle, and I will move the units back to the board. Okay, and here we are back. The retreat, those two units that retreated went to Berlin, and we have the one depleted Prussian unit still in that fort, and we have the Austrian stack uh, sieging that fort. So that's where we are. So there are no more... Did I, was there a battle over here? No, I was thinking about it, but I I got... Um, I'm being overcautious. <laughs> I brought reinforcements up before I attack down there. Uh, so that will, I believe, end the fight's battles phase. So let's see, double check. Yep. So the next phase, of course, is remove recovery markers from units. So nobody recovered for the Austrians. Then we go to mark control of spaces by placing control markers. Um, I would have done that as it happened anyway, because I don't like waiting, but uh, no, that didn't happen. This they're still they're still hanging on. Okay, so that is control, and then we check to see if uh, Austria can draw tactics cards. Well, they didn't, and and those where did my cheat sheet go? Those where did the tactics card? So, take control of an enemy fort, no. Relieve a siege, no. Won a field battle. So they did win a field battle. At least one attack has taken place, if not. So they did win a field battle, so I guess they would get a card here. Won a field battle, but lost a siege. So they do get to draw a tactics card. So I'm going to reach over here and grab one. And I'm going to see what they get. I'll show you what they get. Rapid... <laughs> this is... This is not good if you're the Austrian. This is the third rapid mobilization card that they have received. So I will put that in their deck. So now they have three rapid mobilization cards. And I don't know, that's not going to do them much good. I may have to get rid of some of those cards in the next winter phase. Um, I think that's it. I think that is going to take us through the Austrian second turn, second phase anyway for this turn, I should say. And so let's take a quick look. No need to check for victory yet. Basically, that was good for the Austrians because now the Prussians are really pushed back more up here than they than I thought they were going to be, and I'm sure they thought they were going to be. Problem is though that the Austrians did go twice in a row, so they're not, of course, not going to get to go again because I think they only had two chits in the cup. But the the Prussians. Well, they still have two chits in the cup, so, you know, here they want, certainly, if they could go twice in a row, that would probably change the tide back over again. So, a uh, quick turn, it was a really quick turn, which is good. So, I, as I said at the start of the video, I am looking at changing the format. What I'm probably going to do, you see the board here as it is now, what I'm probably going to do is go ahead and play the game to the end, and I... I'm sure I'll record as I do that so that I can highlight anything of interest that may happen. Uh, I think I'm going to do that. Like I said, I'm still, the format of the channel is still kind of up in the air in that playing these games like this to the end is just not going to work because it's taking entirely too long. And I've got a backlog of things I need to get to the table. I've got some brand new games that have arrived. And I've got some brand new old games <laughs> that have arrived that I really want to get to the table. And of course, we still have things that I've already unboxed that are waiting, and it's just, it, I can't do this. I can't play one turn like this and uh, and do it. That that may change later when I retire, which is not that far off. And maybe, maybe we'll see a lot more postings of videos, and maybe I can come back to this format. But So what, I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this game. Um, I'm going to try to finish this game quickly, and uh, there'll at least be one more video on it of, to show you what happened. Because what I want to do is I want to play, you know, when I do a game like this, I want to play it to the end and then do a, a, a wrap-up review on it. I think you need to play a complete game before you can make comments about, you know, how the game plays and things like that. So that's what I'm going to do. 
look for that and uh, as I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the video also look for a announcement for perhaps Solo Babble Live where I we just kind of have a chat and I sit down and I think for the first one like I said I want to take you through some of the compass games that I pre-ordered and possibly if we have enough time I'll look at some of the GMT games that I pre-ordered because both of those game companies I I pre-ordered quite a bit <laughs> so um, and then and I'll answer questions and ask questions perhaps in the chat. So look for that. And that's going to do it. So as, as always, thank you for watching.